In today's video, we're gonna look Look at some data behind um, the reasons the older generation or elderly people should train. So this whole slide is basically going to be, be based around why you, your parents and your grandparents should be training. And it's a, just a practical review. Um, so before I go too much further, I do want to say that a lot of the information I got was from David Nolan of Synapse Performance. Um, you guys can look him up, but he referenced quite a bit of this stuff and I thought it was very, very interesting. So one of the quotes he had on it, which was by 2050, the number of people aged with ages greater than 65 will exceed the number of people under 15, which I thought was a bit crazy. So it is a graying population overall on average, as people do begin to live longer and have less children at the same time. So age is something that comes for us all, but by approaching your lifestyle choices and habits correctly, you can remain independent for longer and avoid fragility. So as we age, it is known that a decline in muscle strength and even testosterone is normal amongst other hormone imbalances or changes. Resistance training is a vital ingredient to remaining independent for longer, even though most older people tend to go toward walking, biking, swimming, which really looks like floating and aqua aerobics. There is a place and there should be a place in their schedule for uh, some form of resistance training. And that can be against any resistance, be it body weight, be it bands, be it very small weights, whatever it is, resistance training or any sort of stimulus upon their muscles will 100% work. So um, I think another thing he had quoted in this study, it was over 90%, maybe 92% of people who are over 65 have or get a chronic disease. Um, so this kind of it looked at the risk of disease, chronic disease, mortality and risk hazards. And it kind of went in to evaluate things like your aerobic, those parts of the population who just did aerobic work, those who just did a bit of strength work, and then those who combine, combine both. Um, so it was quite an interesting study and I have some more information on it here. So what does the data show? The study was... I think it was originally in 99, but again, it was revisited and the paper I found was in 2010 and it looked at skeletal muscle dysfunction in critical care. So wasting weakness and rehabilitation strategies. And it compared people's training with mortality. So those who did aer aerobic training alone had a 16% reduction in mortality. Those who just took part in strength training had a 21% reduction in risk of mortality and those who did both had a massive 29% reduction in the risk of mortality so it's quite simple and clear to see that doing some exercise is better than none doing some strengthening work is better again and being able to include both again is great now when we're looking at training or resistance training for the elderly population or for anyone above 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, it's going to look very different, obviously. It's going to be very easy to stimulate both their aerobic and their strength work. It's going to be some very simple things, just like box squats, bodyweight box squats, reaching for objects, moving objects around, carrying objects, things like that. It's very, very, very simple stuff. And in terms of the aerobic training, again, walking and small doses of that kind of training is going to be great. Even social clubs such as dancing or be that ballroom dancing or swimming or the likes of acro aerobics or anything like that. Anything that is going to stimulate their heart and lungs is going to be advantageous to them. Obviously, if you can implement some resistance training, it's going to be even greater then. So there is a strong relationship between strength and all cause mortality risk. And this is what all the studies are showing. And what does it mean? Looking at the data, stronger people live longer on average. People with more muscle mass, people who are stronger, people who are more resilient and independent live longer. So the huge findings is that people over 85 years of age who implemented said resistance training increased their muscle size by 44% and strength by staggering 134%. Now, I didn't get into details of what the strength training looked like. I think it was two days a week. Um, again, didn't really look into the details too much on it. Um, but I know that this paper has been studied quite a lot by 
a few different people who I trust, so I didn't feel the need to jump that right into it, which again could come back to bite me. Um, this has an incredible knock-on effect though, becoming more independent, more able and more confident. If you think about the practical applications, reaching up high without pain, lifting a grandchild, climbing the stairs, even as far as being able to take a dump and wipe your own ass. These things are huge when you get to a certain age and if you can become independent, resilient and be able to move around freely, pain-free, being able to do things yourself and not having to rely on others you will leave you will live a happier life you live a more independent life and that will have a knock-on effect to the people around you as well so these are huge findings especially the strength by 134 percent because a lot of people believe at a certain age it's a lost cause if i start training now it's too late my testosterone is low my hormones aren't as good as they used to my recovery is poor you know i'm not able to keep up with that kind of training but it It just goes to show that there is that possibility there to get stronger, build more muscle, become more independent and not have to depend on other people in your latter years. Um, And that's the main message of this study. So the last thing is you will get older, but you don't have to become fragile and totally dependent. Resistance training can slow down the aging process remarkably. Tell your man that make sure everyone you know does some sort of resistance training, especially those who are getting older. Um, another thing David Nolan quoted in the paper, it, it said, uh, age is inevitable, but getting old isn't. Um, and I suppose that comes back to feeling old isn't as inevitable as, as you might think, or you might be able to slow down the process of getting old. Um, old being your typical, stereotypical photo of uh, an old man in a Zimmer frame or an old man who's dependent on someone else to move them around, or woman be that. But um yeah, I thought that was a very interesting study, especially when I saw the percentages and I saw the risk of mortality and the decline when you added a little bit of strength training, aerobic training and both. I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. Again, everyone should be training for loads of reasons, but if this doesn't put the nail in the coffin, for lack of a better word, then I don't know what will. So do make sure that you and your older loved ones are doing some form of resistance training.